The Spirituality Now podcast is sponsored by Delaflor Teachings International, a spiritual and systemic coaching and consulting company with the mission to help individuals, businesses, and corporations create brilliant futures through sustainable transformation. Also sponsored by the Network for Human Empowerment, a philanthropic TV network that serves Spanish-speaking communities with free, conscious education aimed to empower individuals to become the best versions of themselves. And our podcast producer, Ascend Media, Authority Syndication, delivering premium video marketing, podcast production, and social syndication. To the Spirituality Now podcast, a podcast committed to supporting you in your journey to life mastery and personal enlightenment. Welcome to the Spirituality Now podcast. I am your host, Yvonne de la Flor, and I'm in video today. You'll probably see this video on my YouTube and when we make our podcast available on video, but you probably will see it if our guest chooses also on her channels. And I'm recording on video live with an incredible woman that has been uh, coming to our podcast to several episodes. We have kind of this series that became like the Shanti series, right? And Shanti in Sanskrit means peace. And we talk all about, you know, uh, boundaries, maturity, uh, speaking your truth, uh, holding yourself in the boundary that, that you said, and a lot of healing and a lot of, you know, a lot of responses from people, especially privately, that were not daring to speak up uh, themes and subjects that Shanti brings with so much not only honor, but genuine care. We have also spoken about care. And you can, you know, we'll we link uh, the links to other, the other podcasts of this Shanti series. And uh, we're so grateful to have you back, Shanti, and in video. It's great to be here. here. And uh, we are going to do this session as um, Q&A because we have so many questions. And we chose the questions. You know, we've gone through the questions of trauma, of abuse, of boundaries, of how do you care, of parenting, of relationships. We even talk about the abortion, right, rules and all that that, that was interesting for us because uh, we got a little bit of backlash of social media, but the podcast is out there. You can listen to it. It's really good. And it helped a lot of women uh, speak up when they couldn't speak. So Shanti, in a way, represented the voice of what many of us want to say, but sometimes we don't have the courage because we're afraid, and that's okay too. So Shanti, we're going to ask you the questions of this same audience. And the first question, oh, okay. The first question is, uh, we're going to start with, we categorize them. So Shanti, what happens when you feel unwell, unwell, and but you have to show up for your children and your husband, and you are afraid, uh, and you are afraid to, to tell them that you are also human, that you also actually also need to rest, but they don't understand it. I've been unwell uh, after COVID for so many months. I feel exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. But somehow my family seems to think that I'm a superhero and I don't get tired. How do you recommend that I approach the situation? Stop being a superhero. I, look, this is like really close to home for me too, you know, about like uh, putting myself first and a lot of the thinking is if I just go to bed and I don't come out, the whole household and the kids are going to fall apart. They might. And that's OK. Uh, my husband co continues to remind me, he's like, you know, Shanti, if you left for three weeks, we would survive. And so part of like not saying, listen, I'm going to sleep and I'm going to take care of myself and you guys are going to have to figure it out. And I don't know how old the kids are, but if there's another solid parent and caretaker, um, sometimes we're the ones that have them believing that we're superheroes because we keep filling in the gaps, even when we feel like shit. And our filling in the gaps is not anyone else's doing. It's our own doing. I feel in filling the gaps because I have this idea that I have to do everything, right? Like I realize 
<laughs> I've been doing the grocery shopping meal planning for the last 25 years. And every once in a while, I feel resentful. And resentful, re resentfulness for me is like, okay, I'm not, I'm not clear in myself. And I realized, fuck, no one asked me. There was never like an agreement between my husband and I that I was going to take over the, this job. Right. But I take it on. Like, it's like, I'm the martyr of the universe <laughs> and nobody else can grocery shop. Nobody else can possibly make the meal plan, you know, and definitely not as good as me. And then what that does is it, it chains me to that task for no reason at all, but that I think I should be. And so if somebody thinks I'm a superhero, it's because I'm doing things outside of my capacity instead of just staying inside of my capacity. That's the, and if, and look, wow. here's the other thing. If you've been showing up over your capacity and you withdraw that capacity, the people around you might not like it. Let them not like it. Right. I, and, and what you just said, like playing this like role of the martyr, you know how many years I did that? I was like, I wanted to receive an award. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my former husband used to tell me, Yvonne, you're such a martyr. And you know, my response, I am not totally <laughs> martyr, totally yeah. like eat first. I will serve the food like and be the last one. And, 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 and I, I, I would be loud. Also, for them to see me, how hard I was working, and dang, that's this is so good. So stop. And if you try to keep that up, you know, like when you're yeah. sick, right? It, it will eat you alive. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so true. Wow, that's so true. All right, so stop being the superhero. This is amazing. Okay, the second the second question we have is from a lady. And she just turned 60 and she said, hello, Shanti, I appreciate your last podcast, especially of you talking about abortion. I had an abortion when I was 30. I didn't want to have it. I was forced into abortion, abortion by the religious, uh, a religious group that I was part of. It felt mm -hmm. super abusive, et cetera. I've done all the shadow work, but my, my question today, you know, I have done the work about that. My question today is about becoming 60 and hearing a lot of people telling me, behave like a woman of your age. I don't know how to respond to that. And I, I've given myself permission after listening to your podcast to be more wild, to be me, but I still feel uncomfortable when people tell me, behave like a woman of your age. What advice do you have for me? First off, that's called ageism. So let's call it what it is, name it what it is. Um, <laughs> I, I think I would get curious with whoever said that and say, what do you mean? I would ask them, what do you, what exactly do you mean? A woman of my, how does a woman of my age act? What are you talking about? Like give them back the responsibility for the thing they said. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Explain to me how you think I should act. And then you have more to talk about. You have to be open. You have to be curious. You have to kind of want to play. Right. In order to do that, you have to be cheeky. Right. They don't do this like, you know, to go into battle. It's not a conflict, but you start to peel it out. The other one is just to realize that that person is swimming in the quagmire of all the things and ageism being one of them. You know, uh, you know who else hears that? This is how ageism works. It's like a, a full circle. You know, who act like somebody you're already like children hear this. Right, right. So it's, <laughs> and then it's like all of a sudden there's this magical number where we age over it. I don't know what it is. It could be 40, 50, 60, 70, where all of a sudden the treatment, the ageism shows up again really clearly. And it's almost identical from childhood. You're being, um, wow. The word, I can't, I, don't, I can't say it very well. Imp infantilized. You're being yeah, yeah. Made a child, right? Like, oh, you're, you're somehow not all there intellectually is the implications, mm. right? And wow. that is all bull crap and we know it. Wow, well, that, that was pretty, well, I love that. I love that, give it back to the others. Like, what do you mean? When yeah. you say give their responsibility to them because- It's such a vague thing, act your age. Well, Jesus. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, and then I would say, how old are you? Oh, you're 35. How old does a 35 year old act? Right. Where is this coming from? Because that's somebody saying that they don't even, there's an unconscious, Absolutely. they are not owning what they're saying because 
You don't say that to somebody with consciousness. That's an unconscious biases coming out of somebody's mouth that they haven't looked at. Amen. And it's dehumanizing. Love, love. These are these are like fire response and so clear. All right. The, the, the next one is one that we have answered it before, but it was so repetitive, the question board in the podcast in Spanish and in English that we'll just ask it. Okay. So Shanti, would you care to expand why are boundaries not about keeping other people out, but they are about keeping yourself in? Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because it's absolutely impossible to keep other people and and life from coming into where you are. It's you, the only place you really have choices in the experience, choosing the relationship you have with yourself and you have with the world and others. You don't get to choose who walks into your life or walks out of it. You don't, those aren't choices that we have. And boundaries are about your own personal integrity. I've been having an issue where I have a very clear boundary and I want something. (laughs) <laughs> and every time I walk in the direction of that thing, there's this meter inside that goes, hey, this compass that says, no, this is, yeah, but I want the thing, but the thing comes with this other thing that I'm absolutely not okay with. And so I, I move towards the thing I want, and it, but it comes with this gooky thing on it. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and I have to be true to myself and say, okay, I may want the thing, but it comes with the goopy thing, and I don't want that. And so it's a no for me. And I have to be, I, that's inside me. That's nobody even knows I want the thing. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody even knows what the goopy thing. I'm not talking to anybody about it. It's an internal, like, how do I walk my path in my own integrity? Staying inside of my own experience, validating wow. my own experience, caring about me first. Cause here's the other side. There's, there's, a, you can care about the planet and not care about yourself. And it's not sustainable. Absolutely. You can care. There's many advocates that they really care about the planet and the animals, but they don't care about themselves and they hate humanity. That is not sustainable. Boundaries are about caring about yourself first, which sounds really selfish and it is. But when you do that, when you build a firm ground of who you are, you naturally give a shit about everything else. That's when you genuinely care. You want to keep the planet healthy and you want humanity to succeed along with the ecology. Amen. It becomes a both end, but Mm -hmm. the very beginning is making sure that you have that really clear foundation of who you are, which means Mm -hmm. it's inside you. You stay inside yourself, inside your own, what your own integrity is. And only you get to decide that. Wow. Wow. So, so clear and so true. So, so powerful. Wow, the next question, <laughs> I don't know, I skipped this, this one, but this was along with the H one. It's about mm-hmm. wrinkles. It's another lady. It says, mm-hmm. hello, Shanti. Uh, I've enjoyed all of your podcasts. I don't miss them. I don't have time to go into Facebook because I'm a nurse and work literally 24-7. Just kidding. I sleep sometimes. But my question is, I'm getting wrinkles and I don't mind, but I'm getting a lot of pressure from my peers from friends to get the botox, get the things. And I wanted to to come to them to to respond to them in a way that respects them. But I just want to say no, but they my no it seems to be not enough for them. They all mm-hmm. punch in and they all gave me a voucher for free botox and I refused to take it. And he I thought oh, it, it was a good question to ask, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's I mean it's true. So I have I'm going to give you, because there's a sphere of, you know, there's people that are close to me and there's people that are further apart from me. So I'm going to give you two options of responses. Okay. So my best friend has had two nose jobs and she does, she gets Botox all the time. And I'm curious about it because I love her. So I'll ask her that. And we, the very first time she was telling me about it, I'm like, oh, and I was curious. I'm like, how do they do that? Does it hurt? You know, normal things, I think. And so she started to point out, well, you could get it here. She touched touch my face. We were very close like physically. And I was like, please stop that. Look, I'm cool with whatever you want to do to your body. I love you. I will never be interested in Botox for myself. And, you know, she had to sit back and be like, yeah, okay. Because the, I don't, I don't want a relationship with you where you're looking at my face and thinking, 